we had prostitutes and crackheads all over the streets, and luckily now, we, I don't ever see that anymore. Yvonne Landry bought her comedy club in 2003, and since, she's seen a big change. People are starting to take another look at Ferret Street and go, hey, the neighborhood's not so bad anymore. It's not so scary anymore. Neighborhood revitalization is a slow, grueling process, but what's not helping is a vacant property across the street. It's a big bummer. Um, it's certainly not a nice view. Before Katrina, it was a convenience store owned by Sal Harris. I always thought I'd retire from there, but Katrina changed the course of my life. Assessor's records show the city took ownership of the property in 1990. Harris admits he fell behind on his property taxes, but was running a business there until Katrina hit. He says he was trying to sell the property in 2008 when he found out it had already been sold to Christopher Puckett, owner of a for-profit development company called Nuco. I was robbed of it. Puckett recently fenced off the property, painted over graffiti, but the roof is still caving in and he's done nothing to develop it. Puckett bought the property that the assessor says is worth $200,000 for just $8,000. It's a source of constant frustration for the neighbors. I have a hard time when other people are given property way below the face value from the city and have done nothing for the past two plus years. Records show Puckett got the property as part of Mayor Nagin's Sale of Adjudicated Property, or SOAP program, aimed at eliminating blight and increasing affordable housing. The act of sale reads, quote, Purchaser agrees to renovate, develop, and or re-subdivide said property in accordance with the plans submitted by purchaser to the city within 270 days. Puckett bought the property in June of 2008. Over the next year, city records show he bought 10 properties total, all well below market value. And all but one, 4613 Willow, are all vacant. Some are overgrown lots. Puckett said he was unavailable for an interview for this story, either in person or on the phone. We're all kind of dumping money into our property and stuff's just sitting there. That's disappointing. Red Street's not the only area where soap properties are sitting vacant. In fact, hundreds of properties were given to nonprofits for free that are sitting vacant, including Acorns. I think about the way it used to be. Arthur Smith moved back home in the Ninth Ward in January of 2007. It's hard for me because I can't see, you know, because of the grass. Butting up to his backyard is 2538 Winthrop. Something need to be done about it. Should be torn down or rehab, but I think at this point it's past the rehab stage. Records show the city gave the community group Acorn the property in 2008. It's now blighted and overgrown. Records show Acorn got 118 free soap properties from the city. 103 of them are either vacant lots or sit ungutted, like 2036 Caffin Avenue or blighted like 1311 Delery Street. The rest were given or sold to other owners, like Habitat for Humanity. Acorn's national troubles seem to have trickled down to the neighborhood where the agency began. Both of their former offices are now closed and their phones disconnected. Emails to the agency's national headquarters were not returned. In the meantime, their properties still sit. I pretty much grew up with the people that, that owns it, and so that's why I'm Try not to howl so loud. If property owners didn't rehab the soap sales within 270 days, they were supposed to return to the city. But our research shows more than 600 haven't, including the Brittany Park condo complex in New Orleans East, leaving people like Arthur Smith, five years after Katrina, wishing on a rainbow that his neighborhood could feel like home again. It was a good sign. Things going to change for me. They ain't going to look up. Katie Moore, Eyewitness News, Night Watch. It's a little heartbreaking, but I'm dealing with it. Arthur Smith lives in the Lower Ninth Ward with this house butting up to his backyard. He says he thought Acorn Housing was going to take care of it. It still looks like this. Early after Katrina, they had a sign post on the lot. You know, and I, I was a little cheerful, you know, because I said, oh, the house going to be rehabbed. It's going to come back or something else going to be put there. But it's still like that. 
It's one of 119 properties the city donated to Acorn Housing Corporation under the sale of adjudicated properties or SOAP program after Katrina. All of Acorn's properties, except a handful donated to Habitat for Humanity, are either blighted or overgrown lots. The city was supposed to take the more than 600 soap properties back if they weren't redeveloped within 270 days. But many nonprofits, including Acorn Housing Corp., still own them. That was something that was put out there just to make sure, uh, I think, for that people would actually start moving on development of the property. I think for the most part, lots of folks weren't able to do that. Some folks were. I mean, we've, you do see some examples of good development from this by Habitat for Humanity and, and Providence and other folks. After our story, some took action. The Acorn folks, uh, I, I was just told today that they have reached out to the city uh, and trying to figure out a way to uh, either get those properties back to the city or for us to try to figure out a way to transfer the properties that they did own to some of these uh, developers like Habitat and others who have actually done stuff with the properties. Acorn Housing created a company to handle their soap properties, AHC NOLA. Acorn Housing changed their name to Affordable Housing Centers of America this year after the Acorn scandal. A spokeswoman sent us this statement, quote, AHC NOLA is working to transfer as soon as possible its remaining lots back to the city or to local community institutions committed to maintaining the lots and building housing as required by the SOAP program. She went on to say, quote, AHC NOLA experienced long delays in clearing title and accessing public funds awarded by the Nagan administration. In fact, AHC NOLA never received any of the over $500,000 in public funding it was awarded under a competitive grant-making process. About that grant, a spokesman for Mayor Mitch Landrieu said in an email, quote, The city has rescinded the award to ACORN. ACORN was in partnership with the St. Bernard Project. The city reprogrammed the ACORN money to St. Bernard Project to do development in the Lower Ninth Ward. One of the biggest problems with the SOAP properties is the developer's ability to clear the titles of the properties. That is essentially making sure no one has a claim to the property, like Larsal Harris, who used to own the SOAP property at 5030 Ferret. I was informed by a neighbor. What did they tell you? That my property was sold at an auction. Since our story, the developer who bought 5030 Ferret for $8,000 started working on the collapsing roof. We spoke with Christopher Puckett briefly on the phone. He said he has plans to turn the property into a bar and restaurant, quote, very soon, but wouldn't give any specifics on a timetable. We're reviewing that one as well. And, and by the end of the year, we will be able to make decisions on each of those properties and each of those groups that own those properties, which ones that we might have to take back or transfer to another developer. The Acorn housing property at 2528 Winthrop has a similar problem. City records show the family members of the late owners want to reclaim it. Acorn Housing hasn't rehabbed a single one of their soap properties, but they say they've spent nearly a million dollars on site maintenance and legal work. They're just a fraction of the hundreds of properties still sitting vacant or blighted. Um, How does the city's new the head of blight policy uh, rate the SOAP program? In the time it's taken to, to do uh, what they were supposed to do, I would give it somewhere a C minus, D. Last week, the city demolished one major SOAP property we told you about, the Brittany Park condo complex. So what will happen with the rest of them? For those who we find sort of not to be in compliance and, and have not acted uh, on developing the property, uh, we're going to take a look at those properties, uh, see if they have any plans and any financing together, uh, sort of evaluate that. Katie Moore, Eyewitness News, Night Watch.